Hello everyone, Peter Z32 back here with another review. And it's a vintage deck, a vintage set of decks. These are the Robert E. Lee Riverboat playing cards. Under this nice tin, on the front you see one of those nice old steamboat, steam panel bolts, I guess they are, from the Mississippi. Really cool looking. And it says Robert E. Lee Riverboat playing cards, of course. Robert Lee uh, was a part of the whole, that's going back to the early years of the U.S. And uh, I'm not, you know, overly familiar with a lot of U.S. history, but obviously he was part of the Confederates. <laughs> he was General Lee. And led him to battle with the United States. And we know how that went. <laughs> so anyways, the French, it's got that. And this is actually what you see on the back design of the cards. For the most part, um, Robert E. Lee, River of World Playing Cards on the one side, copyright 1980, Albert E. Price. So it's pretty old. The other side, again, Robert E. Lee, River of Playing Cards, top, that's the top, Robert E. Lee. And you see a couple club tips on there, throughout actually. And then the bottom, again, the same thing. And nothing on this bottom. This flips open. I'm not sure if these are USB-C or not. I don't think so. They don't handle like USB-C deck. And they're definitely not uh, a standard size either. I'll show you that momentarily. I noticed this. This is a normal USB-C card, the Royal Pulp. So I just reviewed. And this is, well, really flimsy, but the Riverboat playing cards. Check out the size difference. I don't know if these are <laughs> Texas sized playing cards, because I think there's a, a special, a different size that's Texas that's bigger or what, but it's a hell of a lot bigger than a regular poker sized deck. <laughs> so anyways, um. I wasn't expecting that. So the back of the cards. It says Robert E. Lee with the ball playing cards. You see a bolt. It's nice details. It's gold. Gold borders just like what you see on the, tuck, on the tin case. And this one has green instead of the black. And it's pretty shiny. You know, it's not metallic ink or anything. Um, the ace. Is just a spade pit, but it looks like a, you know the. I guess it represents the playing cards that we have seen back in that era. It's just a kind of hand drawn spade pit, hand colored. Same with the indexes. Um, go on to the rest of the cards. You got a couple of jokers. It's also kind of fit. They say joker in the quarters. It's a full bodied joker like the you would see back in the seventeen. 1800s for pips on there as well and they remind me of a joker that I saw have seen in some Zach Daniels decks the court cards again look like the old school ones except that they are not full bodied like the jokers big pips and mixes are on there everything is you know not standard obviously and oh, what's this Couple of bonus cards in here that I just found. One says, A Thoughtful Jester. And oh, this is an extra card because there's not many card games you can play with 51 cards, but you sometimes lose a card. So they threw in this card in case you do lose one to replace it. And this one has information on the deck. It says, As any true professional will attest, poker is a game of skill, yet too often is a friendly match infested by tin horns whose only purpose is to win at any cost. Fret no longer. The problem is eliminated through ingenious design in the deck you now hold. Larger card size makes 
palming and secreting up the sleeve well nigh impossible. Simplicity of back design renders even subtlest marking easy to detect. Bold numbers and suit symbols and bite recognition and dims on to light so magnifying eyeglasses are no longer necessary. Really magnifying glasses. Slip this pack into her the least next trip up or down river and return the game of poker to friendly contest to seal and honest chance for which it was devised. So <laughs> they made them bigger intentionally to prevent palming because yeah you'd have to be under the giant to palm this thing <laughs> more or less. Um and now in the end font tester. Pretty cool. So that's what you get in this deck. Uh, some more court cards. Really think it's type deck. I don't know if there's any more five pull test cards in there. But anyways, that is that. Uh, I'm not going to worry about waiting for a stock or a handling or anything like that. It does have a smooth plastic coated type finish. Uh, I apologize if I'm off camera. If I'm, I apologize. I, just, I wasn't paying attention to what I'm doing here. I'm like this. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, well, okay, they don't handle. Um, and the very flimsy stomp, as you can see. I mean, I can bend this card in half if I wanted to. And, I mean, the art looks fine. Although, I'm usually not a big fan of one way back designs. But, um, I'm not going to worry about rating this deck because it's just. It is what it is. It's a vintage deck. It's different. It's fairly standard, so don't worry about that too much. That is what I've got. Um, I think you can actually get these on Amazon, but I got this on Etsy. More than that. It was 12 bucks for shipping. Can't go wrong with that. Anyways, that is what I got. The Robert E. Lee decks. <laughs> Today's review. And I will see you next time. Another one. Don't forget to check out collectiblepointcards.com. Use the code VJZ for you to get 10% off your order. Comment, like, rate, all that fun stuff. Subscribe. And I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.